Good morning. Hello there. I'm Diane Majors and I'm representing the search committee this morning. As you know, we have submitted our candidate nomination for Phil Rushton to be our next lead pastor. He's been affirmed by the lead team and now we're happy to present some questions this morning that the congregation has submitted. Our first question for you, Phil, is you are in a very busy season of life raising a family as well as pastoring a congregation. What habits or routines have you and Julie put in place for self-care to refresh your soul and prevent burnout? Well, hello, Bellingham Covenant Church. I'm glad to have the chance to respond to some of your questions this week. I really appreciate the question about self-care. It's just such an important thing as a pastor and something that I take very seriously. So I thought I'd share just a few rhythms in my life that help me stay healthy spiritually, physically, and emotionally. On a daily level, um, I have some rhythms of prayer that are really sustaining for me. I begin my day in my study here and spend about a half hour or so in contemplation and prayer. And then in the evening when I walk my dog, I love to pray the prayer of examine. And it's a time to look back over the day in gratitude and confession. We have some other rhythms that aren't just spiritual practices in a normal day, but I have a rhythm of running, which I just love, and it keeps me feeling healthy physically and emotionally. And then as a family, we have some good rhythms with our kids. Thankfully, they are great sleepers. So by 8 o'clock, they're in bed, and then Julie and I have the evening to ourselves to process the day, talk together, and invest in our relationship. On a weekly level, I just have a rhythm of Sabbath. I practice that on Friday, a day away from the office, time to be with family, to rest and be renewed. And then we have some weekly rhythms of being in small groups and worship, which are important. Monthly, I connect with my spiritual director, and that's really important for me to have someone that listens well and that I can process life with. And then I meet with a group of covenant pastors uh, uh, regularly for accountability and support. Lastly, just on an annual level, we love to take some extended vacation in the summer and be with family. And then I usually have a couple weeks out of the year where I'm either on a spiritual retreat or doing some study leave to keep learning and keep connected with God. Our next question is, and we've heard this question in many forms from different people, but basically, are you ordained by the Evangelical Covenant Church, or are you working towards that? So my journey to the Covenant began a few years ago during my doctoral studies at Fuller. There were five Covenant pastors in my cohort, and they introduced me to the Covenant denomination, and I quickly found this to be a place to call home. There is just a deep sense of alignment theologically, culturally, and around the ministry values. I told one of my covenant friends a while back, uh, where have you beautiful covenanters been all my life? There's just a real sense of this is the place I've been looking to, to plant some roots. And so soon after that, I began the process of transferring my ordination and have been in process for a couple of years. That uh, involves enrolling in a program called Covenant Orientation, which involves uh, some courses at North Park and participation in covenant events and uh, some advising relationships with other covenant pastors. And so I've done the majority of the coursework, been out to Chicago a couple times studying covenant theology and history. Um, and, uh, but the reality is that you can't finalize that process until you take a call. It's a bit of a chicken and egg situation. And so um, I will be completing that process this year after uh, accepting a call. Um, this August, I'll also be licensed by the denomination, which allows me to perform all the functions of ministry while I finish up this process. Our next question. In general, BCC is stronger in caring for people who come to us than in reaching out to our community. What success have you had and what ideas do you have to help us grow in this aspect of ministry? So helping churches engage missionally is a real passion of mine. During a recent conversation with your lead team, someone mentioned a great metaphor about church, saying, what if the church was less like a cruise ship and more like an aircraft carrier? 
You know, a cruise ship is a place where you go to be entertained and to consume and where you want to stay. An aircraft carrier is similarly a place where you do need to go, uh, but the purpose is for respite and refueling and getting a new mission. And I just love that image of a church. I think a healthy church balances both gathering and scattering. We do need to gather and be nurtured and formed, but it's so that we can then go back out and make an impact in the community. There's a couple ways we can be missional. I think we initially often think about being programmatic. So what are the programs or projects we can do? And there's a, a place for that. I think it's good for churches to find a couple ways to come together in mission. Here in Cowlitz County, I have been the co-director of our local cold weather shelter. And I've been active and have experienced just mobilizing churches to work together to provide shelter and hospitality and meals for the more vulnerable people on our streets. But aside from the programmatic aspects, I think there's also an organic aspect to being missional that's really important. And the Great Commission says, go into the world and make disciples. And we usually read it as this imperative, go. But it's actually this participle going, and it has this implication more of saying, as you go about your life, make disciples. It's something that's organic in the midst of your work and your family and your community engagement. And I think uh, often just those natural relational connections are the context for being missional. And so one of the challenges I issue to folks is to encourage people to have connections outside the church. We can't be missional if we're always spending time inside the walls of the church just with people uh, who are of the faith. And so again, having that balance of connecting and being out in the community is really vital for being healthy and missional. Before you go, Phil, we have a couple more questions for you. Hi, Pastor Phil. My name is Stella and I am nine years old. I'd like to know, what is your favorite thing to do with your family? So the favorite thing that I like to do with my family is to go to the park by our house. We have a really beautiful lake and it's got some great playgrounds. We're kind of missing it right now though because of the quarantine. So uh, we're not able to get out there quite as much, but on a nice sunny day, being out in nature with the family, playing at a park is a pretty ideal day. Hi, Pastor Phil. My name is Penny, and I am six years old. I would like to know, what is your favorite thing about being a pastor? So my favorite part of being a pastor is that I get a front row seat into the way God is at work in people's lives. I love to walk alongside people, um, care and listen as they seek to make sense of God in their lives. It's just a real privilege. We want to thank Phil for spending time with us this morning answering these questions. Remember, you can also send in more questions um, for Phil. And if your questions are not answered in these interviews, remember that you will have an opportunity to meet Phil and ask him questions personally on our candidating weekend, July 16th through 19th. That weekend will conclude with a very important congregational vote where you get to do your part in bringing our next pastor to us.